There are a few things I wish I had known before I brought home my first goats. And since those first few days of goat ownership, which was 10 years ago, I have learned so much. Here are a few things to think about before you bring home your first goats. Number one, the cream from goat's milk doesn't separate. I really didn't know that goat milk doesn't separate like cow's milk. Before picking up my two dozen milk, I dreamed of butter and cream, but that's not the case. Goat milk is naturally homogenized, which makes it as close to human milk as possible. That's why many who are lactose intolerant are able to drink goat milk without problems. But sadly, unless you have a cream separator or the patience to skim a bit of cream at a time and save it in the freezer until you have a larger volume, butter dripping off the edges of your homemade bread won't be a problem. You may want to put a cream separator though on your Christmas list. Number two, in some states there are restrictions on selling raw milk. I had no idea that Montana, of all places, you know the wild, wild west, has some of the tightest restrictions on selling milk of all the states. In other words, it is completely illegal to sell fresh milk for human consumption. So double check state regulations if you would like to sell any milk. But there is an update to this. Although not completely legal, Montana laws are changing. More information about Montana laws can be read on the Raw Milk Montana Facebook page. They are working tirelessly, thankfully, to legalize the sale of raw milk. Number three, your fridge will have every shelf full of milk, yogurt, and goat cheese. Really, it will be full. And then you realize it only makes sense to get bottle-fed calves and a pig to help slop up the rest. You're welcome. <laughs> I can't keep up with making enough yogurt for my kids. They would eat our raw goat milk yogurt three times a day and literally <laughs> they throw a fit when I say, no honey, we had some for breakfast just an hour ago. We'll have something else for a snack. <laughs> I wouldn't be without my Yogotherm yogurt incubator. It makes making yogurt a breeze. Number four, goats are pickier eaters than portrayed. Goats eat tin cans, right? Huh. We brought home our first pygmy goats to take care of the weeds in our shelter belt. The only thing they did was completely lay bare our caragana bushes waist high. I did pull out my sweater sleeve from my buck's mouth, however. I do believe it saw the inside of his stomach because I pulled and pulled and it kept coming. Goats really prefer brush, leaves, and broadleaf plants more than the, they like the typical pasture grass. Number five, goats waste a lot of hay. I have a theory. I think goats pass down a varied version of Goldilocks to their kids. This hay is too thick. This hay is too thin. These prized flowers in the flower bed are just right. And although building this goat feeder has helped with hay waste, because it keeps the hay off the ground, there is still the hay that hits the ground. It must be making really fertile ground under my goat feet. So this is a tip. Every day you can clean up the hay in or on or around the goat feeder and give it to pigs or throw it away over to the horses or the cows. They love it. And, and it makes you feel better because the good hay isn't being wasted. At work, sometimes when we've had lots of snow just accumulating, sometimes it doesn't work because you have lots of hay on the ground, then it snows and it just packs it down and, and then you just have a frozen mat of hay. So sometimes that doesn't work. But in the summer months, spring, summer, fall months, keeping that raked up and um, out of there will keep it from piling up to very deep piles. Number six, bucks really, really do stink. You are warned about the stink, but the reality of the musky experience just sets you back a bit. And then you have to explain to your mom why she shouldn't be scratching your sweet buck between the eyes and under his chinny chin chin. How do you explain that properly? <laughs> they flap their lips too. It's quite an experience. 
go away. He's icky, icky thing. Number seven, the goat kids are so cute. It's hard to say goodbye. Baby goats are the sweetest little things ever. They're snuggly and ready to be the best of friends. And after weaning day, there just may be a lump in your throat as you say goodbye. And it gets worse when your kids are wailing as the goats are driving away to their new home. And, and you begin to wonder what it would take to own a few hundred goats. Number eight, it is so important to contact your extension agent right off before you get your first goat or shortly after. It is so important to know the levels of copper and selenium in your area. There are so many complications that can come up when goats are short on minerals, even if free choice mineral is offered. If your area is short on these minerals, you will need to give your goats copper boluses several times a year and or selenium shots as well. And then record when you give these supplements in a goat health and information binder like the one linked below. Why? <laughs> because there is no way that anyone could expect to remember when the last time they gave a bolus or a shot or trimmed their hooves or how many kids they had two years ago and on what day and, and how much milk your does produce each year from year to year. Do you see how valuable it would be to keep track of all that information in one place? It's essential and so valuable. Seriously, <laughs> stop. <laughs> Please read more about goat mineral down below in the, in the link. It's a comprehensive guide to goat mineral needs and it is so important to know above almost anything else in goat ownership. Number nine, know your water source for your goats. Did you know that high levels of sulfur and iron in water will tie up the absorption of copper and zinc, two very important minerals for your goats? Just be aware of how your water could potentially affect your livestock. You must read the article linked below about water sources and how it could affect your goats. Take the time to do that, it's worth knowing. Number 10, goats are rather fragile. That doesn't sound right, does it? But in my experience, when you are raising animals for breeding purposes, there is a big demand that's put on their bodies to grow the offspring inside of them and then to produce the milk to raise them. And when a smaller animal has multiple babies, it can multiply the problems at birth. Because of this, I believe it is really important to have an emergency plan in place for your animals. In particular, knowing exactly what you will do and who you will call if problems arise when your goat is giving birth. That is so important. In moments of crisis, you never want to regret your decisions or lack of quick action. In fact, that is exactly what we offer with our Raising Goats course, the help and advice you need in a crisis. Does any of that stop us? <laughs> nope. Once a goat lover, always a goat lover. It is all quite worth it. <laughs>